Let us pray. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you as the community of the people of Uganda, the people that you have created because heaven and us is created by you and all that is in it. We thank you for planting us in this beautiful country called Uganda. We thank you for making me a woman and is part of the beautiful community of women. I thank you for this particular program that uh, you have designed to encourage other women and other personality walking the same journey. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you have done good for me and my family and for my country. And I pray, God, that as we start a new month and as we walk through the new year, Father, we pray that your spirit will go with us. We bless you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful start to an amazing show. Super Soul Sisters, my name is Rowena Kajumba, and we are here with Honorable Cecilia Ogwal. She has been dubbed so many names, but we shall leave that <laughs> later for the discussion, and we we'll see how that goes. I know this is going to be a pretty interesting discussion. Uh, she's made time for us today, and please take this walk with us as we go through her life story. And of course, as a woman who has stood her ground and pushed boundaries. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you for making time. You're very busy, we know. <laughs> and looking good. I'll thank ask you. you later how you're doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that beautiful start to the thank program. You. Yes. Thank you. Now, um, I'll just jump straight into it. I did introduce you, yes, as Cecilia Ogwal, but I'm pretty sure any other Ugandan would want to know who is Cecilia Ogwal. Before the Cecilia Ogwal they know <laughs> and see and hear of you, you know, when she's uh, coming up to give her opinions out there. Well, I, I was born in 19, uh, 1946, yes. and you can count your fingers. Yes. So uh, if you want me to grow backwards, mm. um, I could be 26, mm -hmm. 36, yes. uh, that could do, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but if you want to be exact, then you can count your fingers. That is true. I think that's the simplest that's I the can simplest, give you. Yes. Yeah. I think the, the person that has given me a uh, most elaborate story about my birth has been Instead, my father. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the I would, I would, I would have thought it would be my mother. But my father mm. uh, appeared to have given me more information. Yes. In any case, he's the one who recorded that I was born on the 6th of December. Yes. Uh, but when we look back, I was not born on the 6th of December. Mm. If you look at the calendar, the way the British have taught us, mm. I was not born on the 6th of December. Yes. But the way we Africans look at the calendar yes. of that day, yes. I was born on the 6th. Six okay. Because I was born the night of the 6th mm. of December. Yes. But I was born at 3 a.m. in the morning, oh, yes. which makes it early morning early of morning. the 7th. Mm. So for me, for the sake of my father, mm whom I respected so highly, yes. to have recorded that I was born on the 6th, I have mm. to honor yes. <laughs> that date. <laughs> I never change because the calendar mm. compels us to, uh, to follow to that. Follow so that I've day. decided that, um, you know, Sixth. let it be acceptable after all mm. uh, in my baptism certificate and Everything. all the documentation were all on the 6th of December. So mm. that will explain um, how I was born. Mm. Definitely... Um, um, uh, Elango 311. Mm. Mm. Uh, I say 311 because my father was Lango, yes, and my mother was also Lango. Mm. I'm talking in the past tense because yes. they have all they've gone, so. they have all gone to be with the Lord, uh, and so they are no longer with us. So they were both Langi, mm. uh, of course, from different clans. Mm. I was born the second child in the family of the late Bonifacio Opio to, and his wife, the late Rosta Mary Api Opio. Opio. So that is the little I know mm. about my birth. I was yes. the second born mm. and the second girl child yes. to my parents. 
uh, my mother having given birth to her firstborn, being a girl, definitely I'm sure she was praying for a, a boy. boy. Mm. And definitely my father was praying for a boy. Mm. It so happened that uh, I came out a girl. A girl yeah. And uh, my father, whether with good intentions or bad intentions, mm. he decided that I was his son. Okay. So he looked at me as his as, son. As the son, yes. And I grew up, not a boyish kind of child, mm. but I grew up with my father looking at me like his son. He got, his, he got so he many got, sons yes. after me, but he decided that uh, I was his son. Mm. And so be it, yes. you know. Mm. Uh, so that shows that um, the, 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 my, our parents, particularly the mothers, mm. suffered rejection from, from the husbands. If you don't get a boy child in the earlier days of your marriage, yes. this is what I can sense now. Mm. Although my father didn't seem to complain, there I didn't. Was, I yeah. didn't hear it from him saying, you know, I, I wasn't comfortable with your mother having a girl. uh, two girls, yeah. uh, but uh, we could sense that that was there, yes. you know. But of course, the third born came a boy after me, and uh, the, after me came twins and uh, so many other children. Yes. Um, it is interesting to know that um, the children that my my mother recorded as being born yes. were 15. Okay. Uh, of course, so many, so many have gone to be with the Lord, uh, but we are, the remnants are still there. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So you can see when our parents uh, got married then, they got married when they were very young. Today, we we'll look at it as um, a rep kind of relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. so at, one, at one time, mm. uh, I, I, when my mother uh, passed away mm -hmm. from Kampala here, so and uh, during a church service, uh, I shared with the mourners that uh, my father was very smart because mm. he married my mother when my mother was 14 years old. Mm. And so my sister, who is the firstborn, was born when my mother was, I think, about 15. 15 yeah. And I could have been born when my mother was about 17. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we are both products of, of rape. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> By today's... <laughs> today's <different>. Yes. <laughs> By today, you might write, say, a hey, female... <laughs> Hey, judgment yes. of the marriage, uh, mm. sexual relationship. Yes. Uh, so we, but we are beautiful and wonderful yes. products of rape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Yes. <laughs> so mm. the proper birth that my my parents had <laughs> when yeah. my mother was of full age, yes. they started far behind me. Mm. <laughs> so that is the interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, so um. Like any other child, yes, I grew up in a rural environment. Um, my father was uh, a medical personnel, not a medical doctor, mm. but a medical a medical worker, worker. Yes, and worked in many health centers in Lango in Lango um, district at that time, mm. uh, and therefore I grew up in that environment in a hospital environment, um, running in and out, out yeah. with other children of mm. nurses, of medical workers, and so on. Um, at that time, you know, our health situation was quite rudimental. So mm. it was not usual that a, a rural health center would have a medical, a fully pledged, qualified medical doctor. They would, That's true. They would do with well-trained medical workers, and those mm. are the the medical personnel that uh, took care of the of the health centers that we had yes. scattered throughout the country, I believe. Mm. But there were doctors that visited some health centers once in a while, mm. and difficult cases were referred to hospitals. So that's the environment yes. I grew up in. Um, 
not any different from any other. Yes. I was born when my father was serving in um, what today is called Kwania District. Okay. It's one of the new districts. Mm. Uh, it used to be under Apache. Oh. Under Apache District mm. was, has now been carved mm. uh, to become a district on its own. Yes. So I was born when my father was serving in that area. Um, and thereafter, we moved to other, other areas. Yes. So and did, I, your, did your father ever treat you like do things with you as a son or take you <laughs> to certain places as a son? And you realized, okay, or maybe as a child you felt, we're just close, me and my dad. Um, not really. Uh, mm. I, didn't, I didn't sense anything um, unusual. Yes. Uh, my father treated us just the same. Okay, that's good. Um, we enjoyed the favor of the, of the father mm. and the mother. Uh, that was absolutely no problem. But of course, mm. my father uh, was also an artist. He, he used to love his guitar. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> he used to love his guitar. Mm. And uh, my sister was a wonderful dancer. Yes. And of course, uh, a beautiful lady. Yes. You know, looking at the two of us. And you know, mm. we grew up two mm. girls two together. Girls, yes, yes. And you will see that uh, this is more beautiful than the other one. <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> she was a small frame, mm. uh, she was mm. small frame, mm. light skin, long mm. hair. Long hair. Uh, mm. She took the hair of my mother. Oh. Uh, so I was darkish, mm. my father's color, mm. uh, and uh, a bit flabby, well, yes. fat is, you know, mm. Mm. normal fat baby, mm. uh, and, uh, and sluggish, <laughs> slow. <laughs> the choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, 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 that is what my mother used to Often describe, said, yes. that it would take me so long to do something, which mm. my sister would do in, in just a half a minute. minute. Yeah. For me, it would take so long, so I mm. would sluggish. Maybe at the time, because you are the youngest, didn't you? Um, no, I never had space. My mother ah, never had space. Okay. I, behind me, there was somebody very quick. Mm. Um, you know, so it's not that we were only two. Mm. So... Um, when I became about five years old, mm. uh, about 1953, if I recall, it was when I started schooling. Okay. And uh, my father was brought up uh, in uh, a Catholic, a Catholic uh, institution. Mm. His father passed on, leaving them still very young. And my father uh, grew up within the Catholic establishment and at that time you know these young boys growing up would be what they call altar boys yes and uh, my father had been recruited to to the uh, to the monastery to mm -hmm. become a priest but when his father died and um, my mother my grandmother also became quite um, sickly okay. he had to leave the monastery to come back and take care of his sibling because he was the eldest from the mother. Mm. I think there was other older women, okay. but uh, from my mother, my father was the eldest of my mother. Oh, okay. And the, the other children born after my father were all boys. So my father had to come out of the monastery to, to look after the siblings who were much younger than, mm. than him. So that's when he came out, and um, my father was looked after by a reverend father, okay. who was a British, um, was called Father, Father Walls, uh, I think a British from Wales. Yes. Uh, so he's the one who, uh, who took care of my father, an orphan, and he was able to, to ensure that my father was adequately educated, and then he was, um, he was taken to this uh, medical training okay. um, institution where he was trained along with other medical personnel that we came to know mm -hmm. uh, closely associated with my father. Okay. So um, let us get into your school life now. You yeah, started, so I went, yeah. I, went to, I went to school like any other child, mm. barefooted, 
Mm. My father, having been brought up in a Catholic institution, uh, preferred to take his children to boarding schools okay. in Catholic schools. And my father then was in Teso. Okay. Uh, the, the, the Catholic mission which brought him up was in Teso, in Luala, mm -hmm. missionary school mm -hmm. and monastery. So my father took us to the Luala primary, uh, primary school for girls. Yes. That was the wing for girls and the wing for boys. So that's where we, um, my elder sister went, mm -hmm. and that's where I followed after two years. Okay. Um, unlike any other child, we were just barefooted children. Mm. We, were not, we did not enjoy any special privilege because we were children of public servants. Mm. Because mm. I think they were poorly paid, I don't mm. know. Mm. But uh, I was just as barefooted as, as any, any other uh, child yes. in, the, in the community, yes. in the hospital establishment. So mm. we're all barefooted, we're all putting on khaki and, mm. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, my father would, uh, would take us, because Luala was quite a way, uh, miles away oh, from, from my, mm. I think about 30, 30 miles or so from Aguata, mm. where my home uh, was then. And my father would uh, put us on Ram Tola bus. Okay. Eh, I, I don't know. I, regardless of, I don't know where you come from. Mm. But there were Asians who owned buses. And those buses were known by their names. Yes, yes. So there was a bus called Ram Tola because the owner was Ram Tola Ram bus. Mm. And that bus used to help us a lot. A lot would go to... Bunyoro go to Eastern mm. region and so on. So the bus that we used to take from Aguata to Dokolo, then Dokolo to Luala, mm -hmm. was called Ramtola bus. Okay. And uh, my father would put us on the bus to Ramtola. Of course, in my first year, my sister would take care of me. Mm. I wasn't, I think, I told you uh, I was a slow, mm. sluggish child. Mm, mm. I wasn't strong enough to wash my clothes and mm. really take so care of myself. Yourself, yes. But my sister was always doing everything. Mm. You know, she was very energetic. And so she was the one taking care of my clothes, uh, making sure that everything was right around me. Mm. Uh, so that's how I was. But fortunately for me, mm. um, when I entered P1, I was far above the others. Okay. Why? Because... I became quite close to my dad. My dad would give me simple arithmetic, one plus one, mm, yes. mm, you know, that kind of so thing. So by the time you went to school? You, by the time yeah. I went to school, this is A, this is B, mm. and I was, uh, was interested. Yes. I was in, sometimes when I have a bit of time, I would, and my father is there, I would run and say, mm -hmm. what is this, what is that, what yes. is this, you know. I would write on, this, on the sand, mm. and uh, we had to buy me some books yes. and some pen and rubber to teach me from home, but without any strictness in yes. supervising whether mm. I'm done, you know. The work on but by the time I went to school, it did help me a lot because everybody was starting from zero. But sure. I already moved from the zero level yes. to somewhere. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so I was far above, above the rest, but I was able to go through my primary one. Mm. Primary two, uh, when I joined primary two, I had to be promoted, promoted to three. Promoted to three, okay before I could finish. Oh, that's good. Yeah, mm. so I jumped. Mm. Uh, I jumped um, the class mm. just because of my performance. Mm. But physically, I was not strong enough. You were enough. not ready for that, I was yes. not strong enough. Mm. Going through P4, I mean P3, going through P4, then again, uh, as I was now moving to five, I had to be jumped. Now, my, that was the time my sister, mm. because the primary used to end at six, yes. primary six. My sister had to move to Kidetok okay. for secondary education. So that was now a problem for me. Mm. And that was the time for me to be moved from Luala to Ngeta. Okay. Uh, because... Um, Still Catholic school. Still Catholic. Okay. Catholic. My father, mm. I told you my father had gone to become a priest. Yes. My father went to the monastery. So mm. strictly Catholic establishment. Okay. Uh, so for even Kidetok was a Catholic school. secondary school. Mm. And so I had to be moved to Ngeta, which is a Catholic school, but a different um, 
organization, mm. uh, religious organization. Mm. These were Verona fathers. Mm. But the ones of Luala were uh, Mill Hill fathers. Okay. These ones were Verona fathers. Uh, so I, I was moved to Ngeta. But prior to that, when I was, uh, when I was in P, P2, P3 there, something, uh, uh, two, two things happened which disturbed me in Luala. One, mm. the school was infested with bed, bed bugs. Mm. And uh, they would do everything. I think maybe they didn't have chemicals at that to time, time, as we yes. do these days. Mm. Uh, they would use paraffin. It would not manage. Uh, they would use hot water. Yes. You know. So uh, they decided now to boil the blankets. Mm. And they boil our blankets and so on in the big, big uh, metal steam pots, mm. which are used for, for steaming our potatoes and cassava. Oh dear. <laughs> and so when I saw the blankets being steamed in the in the big in the big in the big, in the big pots that were used for our cooking, cooking beans and pot potatoes and so on. Mm. Uh, I couldn't imagine myself eating from the for, same pot. Yeah. So you can't imagine I escaped from school. <laughs> because you're like I am not I'm not going to eat. <laughs> I escaped for, I think, about seven years. <laughs> huh? I escaped from school, from mm. Luala. I walked to Dokolo mm. on foot. You were determined. Yes. Mm. I walked on foot to Dokolo. And Dokolo, there was the home of uh, a lady uh, whom our father had, had uh, introduced us to. And most of the time, when the bus could not, uh, maybe has broken down or something, we would um, end Stay up there, at the yeah. home mm. of the lady called Rufina. She, she was long, she's long gone. Okay. Um, so I, I ended up there. Mm. And by the time I landed there, my feet were swollen and blah, blah. She so, must have been shocked. Eh, so <laughs> she was in shock. Mm. So after about a, a couple of days, um, she then um, got a bicycle to take me home. Mm. I'm surprised my father didn't beat me up. I thought he was mm. going to, my, in my mind, I was going to receive some beating. Some beating, yes. You know, but I had a good argument. Mm. How can my father expect me to eat? It from the from, same uh, uh, From the same container mm. that boil, boil uh, bed bags. Mm. But my father understood. Yes. Um, after listening to me, he took me back to school mm. and I was, I was taken back without any any issue. I mm. thought the school also would discipline would me. <laughs> they didn't. Mm. And uh, I uncomfortably also accepted now <laughs> to adjust <laughs> to adjust my attitude. Mm. Uh, you know, um, uh, and of course, uh, you know, the, the, one of the sisters was trying to explain mm. that uh, this pot kills all the all, all the insects and so on. And and so everything. there is nothing which can defile the food you are eating. Mm. You know, trying to work on my psychology. But you did not. But uh, yeah. for me to imagine that uh, I'm eating from the same container mm. where the bed bugs have been boiled, uh -uh. Mm. it, it didn't, didn't go well <laughs> with me. So that's one of the things which has given me a very bad memory mm. of Luala Primary School. Mm. Uh, and then the second incident, and that, that incident has affected me throughout my life. Mm. A storm hit the school. And that's, same school? That's the same okay. school, the primary school. Mm. And uh, removed the roof oh. of, the, of, the, of our dormitory. Mm. Um, removed, and the storm was so heavy. You know, this one which carry things. Things, yes. You can't imagine that I was carried in the storm she was taken with the storm. I was carried in the storm. You know, like it yeah, carries you. Not something to <laughs> you forget, know. Yes. I think it's because I was trying to run from one place to the, to next, the next building. Yeah. And I was carried in that storm and I landed in the next building and hit against the wall. Oh. And I thought I was dead. So when I woke up, I thought I was not I was not alive. You were in heaven I, somewhere. <laughs> I had to check whether I was yes. actually okay, mm. eh? I, but I was wet all over. Mm. And that thing, 
as so, so, yes. a, a, that thing affected me so much mm. that even now I when cannot manage storm. Mm. When there is thunderstorm I, at night, I can't sleep. You know, I have to cover my ears yes, and yes, you know yes. uh, because so that thing affected that. me so because sorry. I had almost died. Mm. So that's that's another um, another incident. But mm. I was moved to Neta Primary School again, it's a girls' school. Catholic mm. uh, establishment. You're by yourself. You're not um, sure how now you by myself, up. but uh, thanks be to God, my my father was always coming to to Lera mm. town, which is not far away from Neta, to check in case there was an issue to check around me. Mm. So it was not a problem, and I, I think at that time my father was also doing some work within the district. I don't know what work he was doing. Um, so that was to bring me near a home yes, so that my yes. family could check on me since they felt I wasn't going to handle, I wasn't yourself, going yes. to handle my... So that is P5 and P6? Uh, P5 and P6, okay. yeah. I, so I now couldn't. you said after P6 now it is secondary school. Secondary in, school. in the P5, P6 you had figured a couple of things out. Yeah, P5, C6 I had adjusted, mm. had adjusted very well but uh, can I assure you... Um, we were not properly fed, mm. you know, like I was always hungry, mm. you know. Um, and sometimes, you know, we would, we would run to look for mangoes, mangoes in the climbing <laughs> mango trees yeah. and plucking some mangoes from mm. across the fence, mm. you know, things like that. And uh, one of the um, things uh, which happened was the, um, the Verona fathers used to uh, promote the learning, they, 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 they had coined, they had coined an advert saying mm -hmm. maths is an easy subject. Maths is an easy, easy subject. subject yes. So they used to promote the, um, the learning of maths in an easy way. Mm -hmm. And they would, uh, they would uh, sponsor some mathematical uh, tests yes. for the various schools within, within Northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I decided in P6 mm -hmm. to compete for it. And my teachers were saying, you know, all these years, the boys who take it, and the boys' school was not far from us, mm. just neighbors. Um, so they discouraged us that the girls have never taken the, math, uh, taken uh, the mathematics yes. um, award. Mm. So they don't see any need to actually, have to you. actually yeah. participate. Mm. But I insisted, and I was in tears. Mm. So when I insisted, to their surprise, mm. that year, I got it. Good. So I got the scholarship, <laughs> and uh, and a boy who hot, who who was already year marked yes. to have uh, to have got that scholarship that year. Mm. The boy was so angry he, that he a did. girl defeated him <laughs> that he decided to repeat mm. P six in Just order to, to sit to in order sure. to sit the following year. I thought to, that yeah to get it, but that, he lost one too. year. Mm, just and, and we grew up knowing each other, so yes. and, and <laughs> I kept telling him yes, that yes. I have made him to miss one year of his education. <laughs> but but that is it. Mm. But one thing I wanted to let people know, mm. and that is when I look back now, mm. how else would I show my community mm. that girls could also so do maths? Do, they do maths. thought naturally, once you're a girl, you cannot you do. could not manage maths. Mm. Mm. And I was able to break through and show them that um if boys can do it, girls can, can also, also do, it. do it. And I, I did that, and because of that, I was able to go through my secondary education in Aboke Girls, the famous Aboke Girls. Yes. That's where I, I, I went for my junior uh, secondary, secondary school. Secondary school, yes. Uh, we'll be back. Just a reminder, we are Dotash Exclusive here at Ginger Road Spear House. They have amazing space that they're giving us here. And of course, we're going to come back and have a very, another very interesting, I must say, discussion uh, with Cecilia Ogwa. Well, from uh, Ngeta Primary School, as I told you, we normally sit our primary examination in P. Six, what we now do in P7, mm. at that time it was P6, and uh, would then uh, be awarded certificate to move on to yes. junior secondary school. And junior secondary school, prior to our joining, uh, used to go up to, sec up to junior three. Mm -hmm. But from our year, it started in two, up, two, to, up to two. Oh. So I joined Aboke, 
uh, for two years. Again, a uh, uh, Catholic establishment yes. under Verona Fathers. And uh, as usual, we had to maintain uh, our school gardens. Mm. We used to grow our own cassava, uh, groundnuts, mm -hmm. you know, uh, beans and so on. So we would be taken to the garden very early in the morning. Around what time? Uh, about six. Hey, about that, six, that six really, started. That was early. You know, they, they would... They would uh, Every day or just weekends, bear, maybe? No, um, well, I think generally from Monday... From Monday until Friday, I think. Okay. From Monday to Friday. Mm. Then weekends, uh, washing clothes mm -hmm. and the uh, dormitories and so on, yeah. and cleaning the compound. So we used to go to our garden and maintain our garden. We had plenty of cassava, plenty of beans, plenty of um, of groundnuts. Mm. Uh, but it had its own disaster mm -hmm. because um, if you see uh, my right. Toe, the big toe, mm -hmm. it was cut by a sharp hole. Oh yes, I, I yeah. was saying that. Which, which almost, which almost ripped, Took off the, ripped yeah. it off, mm. because the the, the 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 hole was very sharp. Uh, that was a big disaster, yes, and uh, yeah. I think that was the last time I went to, the, went garden to the garden because yeah. I think it's because of my being a weakling and so on. Mm. I, uh, digging, I was just forcing myself to dig because it's a school. It's a school, yeah. Mm. It's a school. Um, exercise, mm. I could not refuse to do it, to do what others were doing. Uh, but I never liked digging. Yes. I never liked it. It's not part of me. Mm. In any case, at home, we don't, mm. we don't dig a site. And that's, people, that's what people do not know. Sometimes, mm. you, that's not what you want. Exactly. It doesn't have to. <laughs> Some people say, ah, she didn't want to dig. Exactly. You know? And mm. yet, it's okay. You don't have to like the digging. <laughs> but for us, it was, it was a mass. You know, mm. it was a school rule. You had to go and dig like Oh, yes, I know how else. strict Catholic yeah. schools and, can uh, be, yes. And the, 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 the nuns mm. and the teachers were there to ensure that everybody was comply, actually, yes. comply to the rules and regulations. Mm. But that's one of the things which I didn't like about Aboke Gauls. Mm. Uh, the digging, the wound in my toe, which remained with me all my life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, yeah. uh, but, but it is okay. Mm. And uh, so like experience. any other girl, we would um, carry our um, our wooden boxes, mm. wooden boxes. Yes. It later on was changed to metal, to metal but uh, yes. during our time it was a wooden box with a mattress on top. You imagine yes. the bus would leave you and you would walk about two kilometers to school, yes. carrying, carrying, your, carrying your luggage, your suitcase plus your mattress. mattress. Because we didn't have border borders then. That is true. Uh, and that's how life was. Mm. You know, at least by the time we came to junior, we now had some, some of these uh, plastic uh, shoes, mm. these sandal kind of shoes mm. at that time. So we could at least walk on the, on the, on the madam yes. with, uh, with our shoes. shoes. Yes. But it, wasn't, it was still scanty. And those, and those plastic shoes, Get so hot. Yes, they when the weather is hot. You feel like your your feet are burning exactly. up. Exactly, <laughs> and when you walk a long distance, yes. you get blisters that is in true. your toes. Mm. But those are the uh, we didn't see any difference, so yes. there was no other option. So we all enjoyed it, mm. you know. Uh, something something new and different at the time. Exactly. Anyway. Yes. yes. So so now you go to secondary uh, junior school. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. that, what what was your journey like in terms of study? Well, w one thing I would. Um, I have, I've taken note of is that mm. unlike my colleagues in school, some of them, the parents would struggle mm. to raise school fees. But for me, because of that event, yes. uh, award which I had, the mathematics the scholarship, um, yes. scholarship award, I, my, fa my parents didn't have to, to, to labor, struggle and labor for my mm. school fees or mm -hmm. anything. This, this thing was taken care of. Mm. Even when I went to secondary school, I did very well as usual. Mm. Uh, I was, ex was a, I, I just naturally liked maths. Yes. And uh, I naturally also liked English, mm. maths and English. But mind you, our schools were very rudimental. We didn't have laboratories and things like that. Mm. But it was okay yeah. for the time. Mm. So I went to um, Aboke Girls, I, I mean from Aboke Girls to... Sacred Heart Gulu, mm. which again was still a new secondary school. I think we were the second lot 
mm -hmm. of uh, of the stream to sit all level. Okay. And uh, at the time we 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 sat all level, we didn't even have examination center. Mm -hmm. We had to join um, Sir, Sam, Sir Samuel Becker, mm -hmm. at that time was known as Opong Duong, mm -hmm. for our examination for all level. And uh, so you can actually rightly call me an OB of of <laughs> Sir Samuel <Samuel> Becker. Becker. <laughs> yeah, because if if you look if you look for my name uh, it will uh, come, yes. at the Sacred Heart, mm. you will not find my name anywhere for yes. all level. Mm. I, I was not there. Yes, uh, my name was in Sir so, Samuel Becker. Mm. Uh, so that's where I sat for my all level. My going through all level was very exciting. Mm. I was then growing up, I was becoming aware of the environment. Mm. Uh, I was very inquisitive in asking my father about so many things which were taking place even in the country. Mm. One time, I think, uh, I think I was in either senior one or senior two, I don't quite remember. But there was, uh, because the, the election was taking place in 1961, mm -hmm. So uh, my father had sent me by bus. I was to spend the night at um, a friend of my father was an Asian. We mm. uh, were very used to the uh, to the family, mm. and I was to go. There was a bus, a Ramtula bus, that would take me to a bokeh. Mm -hmm. Somehow, when I saw the posters all over the walls, the trees, yes. advertising about the rally which was to take place mm -hmm. in town the following day. Yes. So instead of going that very day that my <laughs> father expected me to go, yes. I decided to make sure no, I attend the rally. The rally. <laughs> Obote was going to address, and then they, they, they were named, I think, oh, Peter Ola, you know, mm. these famous names of mm. the UPC and so on. Yes. And the catch word with me at that time was independence now. Yes. Uh, a slogan which the Democratic Party didn't have. The mm -hmm. Democratic Party just wanted independence. Mm -hmm. But the message which the UPC was carrying was, was independence now. now. And that appealed to me. Mm -hmm. And then there were these pictures of um, Africans being dragged around like slaves, mm -hmm. you know, with the with the chain Chains on their and necks yes, and yeah. you know and i looked at i looked at me and my ancestors being being uh, handled like this mm -hmm. i felt angry so we are right yes to to fight for our independence mm -hmm. so it it entered into my nerves so i attended the attended the rally that was the beginning of all of this i attended the rally <laughs> and uh, you had to see me stamping my feet and clapping but a young child <laughs> putting on, you know, <laughs> I just clapping. Huh? So now, mm. and without knowing, mm. my father mm. caught up with me the following day. <laughs> I had not gone. You had not gone to school. So my father went to the uh, to his friend, mm. uh, the Asian friend who, who used to work in the. I think it was the clerk to cancel. I, I don't. I don't quite remember. Mm. I said, "What happened?" He said, "Oh, you know." She actually asked me permission to attend the rally. Rally? What rally? So my father was hot-tempered. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you can imagine uh. my father <laughs> on a bicycle <laughs> chasing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I had to move running. between. The, I had to move between the buildings. <laughs> And of course, him with a bicycle, uh, yes, he could have hit him in yeah. the building, mm. even leaving my baggages behind. Behind, because now you know they've. Uh, because now I had to run for my life. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is, where am I going? going exactly. <laughs> the luggages are left behind, mm. and uh, I had to, whether I like it or not, I had to go to the bus park. Yes. Yeah? And if I back. if I went to the bus park, I would he would cut, he would catch up with me Definitely, there. Definitely, yes. Uh, so that was the dilemma. Mm. But I think my the the Asian uh, uh, friend mm. I think also calmed down my my father, mm -hmm. and so it was now the Asian who got someone to pack my things on the on the, on the bicycle mm. and took it to the bus park. Okay. You know, mm. there was no way they would uh, get me 
So <laughs> the, the man just stood there. And waited. And waited. And so I came. Mm. I came, and uh, of course I had my money for the bus. And I was able to put myself in the bus, and I went. <laughs> and that's, that's how. Yes. And that's how. And, and the strange thing, I don't know what my father, maybe the Indian man talked to him a lot. I don't mm. know. Mm. But even when I came back for holidays, he, he never raised that anything. issue. But it's me who once in a while who would, bring would, it up. Would, would remind him, would remind him about what I had in the rally. <laughs> that, that is it <laughs> true? Is it true we are going to get our independence mm. next year? Mm. I would ask him. Yes. And then we say, you study first. Yes. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> Study first. <laughs> so mm. I would once in a while say, is it true this is happening? So, yes. So, yes. And uh, during that um, secondary school education, we would get newspapers. There were Catholic um, newspapers that would be brought to our school every week. Mm. So I would go through some of the um, publications mm. and from there I would get some good, some news, mm. some personalities. Um, and so and I, I would want to know what was happening. There were uh, some countries which had already obtained independence. Others are struggling to, be, uh, to become independent. Others were fighting. Yes. Uh, people were being killed, you know. But it's like it put me in a fighting mood. I wanted to be part of the... <laughs> eh? now, now we know where the drive <laughs> came from. <laughs> so even, even when, they were, when they came to school... Mm. To that is now senior. I, I was in the senior. I was in the sacred heart. Okay. I was in senior three, senior one, senior two, is when they were recruiting because there were two elections, mm. one in sixty one, and another one in sixty two. Okay. Sixty one. Uh, I don't think I was very much, but sixty two, I knew what was happening. Mm. You know, so we would. Uh, I was all over that place. Mm. You know. I was all over the place. I even went to where people were voting. From, yes. From, mm. yeah, to the polling station. And when you asked me, I would just, because I was, I was, <laughs> I was short, mm. but fat, mm. you know. But you found your way around. I would find my way around. Mm. Um, and so I was there. I was aware when the election took place. Took, yeah. uh, that was in 62. When independence took place, I was definitely aware of what was happening. Mm -hmm. Come 63, I was now in uh, senior four. Mm. One of the landmarks of my academic life, mm. I also encountered it in that year. Mm. Again, um, there used to be uh, an English essay writing competition okay. for the entire country, sponsored by a British marketing company called Brookborn. Ah, oh, yes. And that's where my Miss Uganda title comes from. Okay. So now there was this essay English uh, writing competition for mm. all the secondary schools in Uganda. And I was interested because they sent the notices to all the to schools. All the schools yes. They were all over the walls, in the classroom and so mm -hmm. on. So I went and talked to my, to my English teacher that I wanted to to participate in the competition. I said, ah, you know, it is just a waste of time. Same, you know, same discouragement like the same first time. Thing. Mm. The good thing, mm. this school don't know the experience I went through already. <laughs> yes. I didn't tell them. Yes. Uh, so it's same statement of discouragement. And you know when discouragement comes from the very person who should be encouraging, encouraging you. you. Yes. Then it's only God, you know. True. I get sunk down mm. and yes, you know, Every year it is Budo, it is, and in, indeed they were top schools. Yes, yes. And who am I in Sacred Heart? Not even a known school. Mm. Budo, uh, uh, what is it? King's College, yes, King College, Budo, Gayaza, and Namagonga. Mm. Those were the schools that dominated the awards. Mm -hmm. And so my teacher was not encouraging me at all. Mm. But again, I decided to you insist. Mm. That let me try. And uh, she yielded, I tried, and they were all shocked mm. that uh, for the entire Uganda, the yes. best girl was from their school. And it was you. 
and, and, and what made me what made me so proud was that a guy as a girl was number two after me. <laughs> <laughs> after thinking, ah, oh, but these people. Yes, they, 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 mm. the previous year, mm. a guy as a girl was number one. Yes, and that's so what they was were expected. expecting to get it this year. Mm -hmm. Now, a girl from a village school mm -hmm. got it. And it was a big event, very glorious event. Yes. Um, when the, when the, the prize award was being given, mm. that event was so big. It was uh, hosted in uh, Grand Imperial Hotel. Oh. And let me tell you something. I was coming to Kampala for the first time. But you were not worried or scared about all of that. You said, me, I'm going to. But I'm going to <laughs> receive my award. Yes. So uh, we, would, um, we would be brought to Kampala mm -hmm. by the Brookbone Company. And it was me accompanied by my parents mm -hmm. and one friend okay. from the school. Mm -hmm. And then they would bring my teacher or my headmistress, mm -hmm. my English teacher or my headmistress, one of the two. And so you can see my parents are there, mm -hmm. my, a big, big my teacher event. is yeah. there, my English teacher is there. Um, and friend. so mm. here we were. Uh, and of course, me and my parents and uh, the parents of other people we were booked accommodation in Mango, Mango Social Service. I think it was an Anglican kind of, mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 what is it? Is it a lodge facilities yes, yes, yes. Uh, for us, which would comfortably accommodate people of our rural state? <laughs> state. <laughs> because now, coming from where we were, coming from where we were, yes, where I would, not even, I would not even know whether my mother would, would know how to flush that the toilet. toilet. Yes, <laughs> I'm not so, so sure. So that was really leave alone even me. Uh, uh -huh. But mind you, senior folk. Uh, mm -hmm. So now they put us in Mengo, mm. uh, where the facilities is good enough. Mm. Um, they looked after us. Now, on that very day, mm. something spectacular happened. The headmistress of Gayaza, Miss Cox, mm. decided that I, the, the organizers put me next to her. Mm. But the way they were arranging the seating was that the their awardee mm -hmm. that's the student being awarded would sit next to the teacher or the headmaster, or the headmaster from their school that's how it was mm -hmm. but in my case i was seated next to miss cox yes on one side and my teacher on this other side mm -hmm. and then of course the rest of the people now i didn't know why mm -hmm. maybe this lady was maybe the headmistress thought we had cheated or what I don't know. Mm -hmm. So she wanted to engage me. Does or maybe really see if you could join her. Yeah. Who knows? Does she know English really? Mm. Yes. Can she can she, can she defeat my students? <laughs> yes. I think she had some mm. question in her mind. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But she looked very friendly and pretty. I mean, uh, naturally British. Yes. Uh, you know, conservative-looking yeah. person. Mm. Fortunately, my English teacher was also British. Sister Teresa was also a British. British yes. uh, and so she engaged me more in conversation than my own, own teacher. teacher yeah. So she was telling me who I am, my family, and so on. Um, what do I want to do? And so on. And uh, we had been taught table manners. Yes. You know. So when you are talking, how you should behave, you should talk when you are chewing, mm. you know, that kind of thing. So I, I, I enjoyed having conversations with, with her. her. Yes. And uh, later on, she appreciated that. Um, indeed. You indeed, had to. Uh, he said, oh, you speak very good <laughs> English and I appreciate it, mm. you know. And, uh, and then she made an offer at the end. She said, would you like, to come for your A level to Gayaza. Mm -hmm. It was a, a surprising question for me. A but good one though. Spontaneously. Oh, at the time spontaneously, you did. I agreed. Mm. It was a good offer. Mm. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I would love to come. He said, okay, um, we shall invite you mm. for your A level. But at that time, 
any child who has uh, passed O level would automatically go to um, a Catholic school for A level. So we were all, we were all um, registered to go to Nabingo mm -hmm. for our A level. That's where I was, I was already registered to go. But here Miss Cox came with an offer mm -hmm. for me to join. But fortunately enough, I passed well. Yes. For my, uh, I passed well at O level to go to A level. And uh, Miss Cox surprised me by writing to the Ministry of Education and a copy of the letter was given to uh, a minister who was from Lango called <coughs> Zephaniah Okai uh, to deliver the letter to my local government mm -hmm. to look for me. So eventually Zephaniah knew my father mm -hmm. and uh, so I was identified and I was at that time teaching in a secondary school in uh, Duku where I was born. Mm -hmm. uh, I was teaching a girls' uh, secondary school. I was teaching that mathematics. That is after your senior four? After, after all level. Okay. Because when I was waiting for results, yes. I was teaching during vacation. That's, At that time, it was... That's a very uh, odd, um, rare thing to go for. <laughs> as, a, as a senior four, back is waiting. Very yeah, few would. Yeah, but you know, it was, it was normal at that time that mm. during vacation, they would employ. Oh, okay. They would employ... No, um, I mean the teaching, you yeah, just go into well, the teaching. Whether teaching mm. or other things. But mm. for me... I went for teaching, okay. to teach mathematics. You know, oh, you love, I was yes, very passionate about it. Yes. So I was teaching mathematics in mm -hmm. that school and staying with my uncle who was a chief. Mm -hmm. um, so the letter surprised us mm -hmm. and I was taken to I Kaya was offered. Well.